I hope it's visible. Yes. Yes. So first of all, um, I think it's important to discuss what the advantage of selecting dermatology or any specialty for that matter. It's best to go through the advantages and disadvantages to weigh the pros and cons and see what suits you best. So coming to dermatology, as you are probably aware, uh, most skin diseases are not, I mean, are less likely to be uh, life-threatening. And uh, there are few skin emergencies. So it's relatively stress-free and you are less likely to be troubled out of hours during on-calls. Also, it's a highly visual field. So uh, uh, you can see what you do to the patient, whether it's just uh, cauterizing some skin tags or doing a cosmetic procedure, the change is there for you to see. So that I believe increases your job satisfaction. Also, it is considered to have a less risk of litigation or being sued compared to some of the specialties involved. So uh, moving on, one of the disadvantages I see is that it is a highly competitive subspecialty. Generally, the requirement of the Ministry of Health is for a cadre of five per year. This may change from year to year, but since it's a highly sought after field, we have a lot of uh, participants sitting for the screening exam. When I said for the screening exam 15 years ago, I think approximately 70 candidates were there, but now I believe it's even much higher, out of which around five or six would be selected. Uh, generally, the number is five, but as I mentioned, uh, sometimes there are, uh, there's a potential for provision of other candidates. For example, for the military, in the private sector, and even foreign candidates sometimes. However, they will not be offered uh, uh, jobs in the Ministry of Health once they pass off, pass off. Let's have a look at the training program. So I think it was discussed before as well by Dr. Pandula. You need to wait one year post internship before you can consider sitting for the screening exam. So the screening exam comprises of an MCQ, no. uh, which comprises of both medical and dermatological MCQs, as well as an OSCE. Uh, once you get through this successfully, you will be allocated to specialized dermatology unit in teaching hospitals, where you will receive a basic dermatology training of, training of six months. Uh, after successful completion of six months, <clears throat> again, there's an exam and you will be allocated to medical wards again in a teaching hospital. You will be able to select a ward of your choice depending on your merit order at the screening exam. And uh, during this one year of medical training, uh, you will have on calls as well as uh, to per perform in casualty wards as well. And at the end of one year, you will have another exam, which is entirely on medicine. We'll have cases, like short cases, long cases, the viva, as well as theory exams. Once you successfully get through this medical exam, you will return back to your dermatology unit, <clears throat> sorry, where you will uh, be there for a, uh, another period. Um, this period you'll be learning advanced dermatology. And at the end of that, you will be having your part two examination. Uh, at the end of the part two exam, again, you will be allocated depending on your merit at the part two exam as a senior registrar to a teaching hospital. Usually the period of senior registrarship is one year, after which you have to go overseas either for an attachment or a job for one to two years, a minimum of one year. Once you return back to Sri Lanka, you have, a, uh, you have to forward a research um, program, a research you have done, uh, as well as a portfolio, and you will have to participate in a VIVA examination. And once you are successful at all of these, you will receive your board certification. Now, uh, with regards to the vacancies in the government sector, this is uh, also another thing I think you have to consider. Currently, dermatological services are available in all the teaching hospitals, provincial general hospitals, district general hospitals, and you're probably aware base hospitals are of two categories, A grade base hospitals and B grade based hospitals. All base hospital A grade hospitals have dermatologists as well as most B grade base hospitals. I was going through the last uh, 
recent uh, annual list and there are 86 stations that have been advertised and currently there are 74 birds board certified consultants in the government sector in addition to that there are 21 candidates who have successfully got through their uh, part two examination who are either currently serving as senior registrars or have returned following their foreign training so as you can see uh, up to now most of the stations are saturated however our college Sri Lanka College of Dermatologists are in discussions with the Ministry of Health to further increase the number of stations, especially in the B grade based hospitals, as well as to multiply the uh, vacancies in the teaching hospitals and provincial general hospitals. So, when you are selecting dermatology, you will have to be prepared to serve quite a time, quite a significant period of time, um, outstation as well. So, that is something you have to bear in mind. Uh, they are, unlike in the past, now there, are, there is scope in the private sector as well. There are several dermatologists who are entirely in the private sector. We also have dermatologists serving in the police hospital and at KDU, the Kotaravala Region University as well. We have several dermatologists working overseas as well. Currently, there are two uh, dermatologists attached to uh, faculties, one in the University of uh, Medicine in Peradeni and the other in Karapitiya, but they are involved not as dermatologists, but as lecturers in other fields, such as pharmacology and community medicine. So these are the options available in dermatology. Uh, however, I would like to say when you're selecting a field, you, have to, uh, you should not rush and you have to think carefully and take your time. Because don't forget, this is something you'll be doing for the most of the day, the rest of your life. Basically, it's not during only working hours, even in the private sector. So most of the day you'll be doing that. So it has to be something you personally enjoy or you're satisfied doing. Don't go by just how lucrative it is, but it should be something you like doing. If you're not sure, it's best to visit a particular unit and see how work goes on there and see whether you like doing that. Um, and I'll be happy to take any questions if there are any. Thank you.